For anyone who watches my videos strictly for discussions of science and critical thinking, and isn't interested in the internal disputes in the atheist community, please stop the video now. I don't indulge in these very often, and I have no interest in making this a primarily atheist channel, but there are times when I have to speak out. I'll be back soon to my usual format. I've done my best to remain neutral, or relatively objective, in the recent disputes on the intersection between atheism and feminism and progressive politics. However, I am concerned about Atheism Plus. I'd like to make this video an open letter to the people behind the movement. My criticism is intended to be respectful and polite, but nevertheless to give voice to the concerns that many people here in the YouTube Atheist community have expressed. My hope is that my concerns will represent others who have yet to be heard because of having a smaller audience or being on the outskirts of the community. Let me first say where I agree with the Atheist Plus movement, and then I'll get to my concerns. I agree that the larger community of atheism online contains some real trolls and jerks, and that they contribute little to a mature discussion. In some cases, they silence others with their tactics, or make women, or gay, or transsexual, or people of a different race feel unwelcome or intimidated. I agree that there should be a place where people can go to feel safe and share ideas without fear of bullying, attacks, or unwelcome sexual advances. I agree that any movement that does not embrace diversity will never truly thrive, and any forum where the conversation is intentionally hurtful will be deserted by all but the trolls and jerks. Here are my concerns. 1. Tactics for Enforcement This really does worry me deeply. Whenever an in-group is formed, the out-group must be excluded for the division to have any meaning. Heretics, apostates, and pagans must be pressured or punished. What we have in the atheist movement are the old religious tactics of shaming and shunning. Shunning can be exemplified by the Amish practice of removing all contact with members of the community who commit some crime. The shunned member is not invited to community functions. No one will do business with them, and their name is not spoken. Even friends and family agree to comply. In the atheist community, this has already taken the form of refusing to appear at a convention or meeting where a shunned atheist is invited to speak. Shaming is similar, but more active way of heaping scorn upon someone who breaks with dogma or orthodoxy. It refers in this case to any coercive attack that calls on the rest of the community to mock or attack someone that has broken some code or taken an unpopular position. If Atheism Plus is to remain a force for good, it must explicitly disavow these tactics and stop them when they get started. As I understand it, a guiding principle of Atheism Plus is tolerance. My concern is that tolerance will not be applied equally to those who do not conform. 2. Ideological Tests Currently, you're discriminated against ideas or positions, not actions. Not being a feminist is something that happens inside your brain. Excluding someone for their thoughts or views isn't the right idea. You want to focus on actions and behavior, not on thoughts and feelings. I don't think this is a semantic point. There needs to be a distinction between excluding people who hold racist views and people who do something or say something hateful about people of another race. It must be the action, and not the thought, that disqualifies someone from participation. This could change the whole tenor of the Atheist Plus movement for me. Instead of being a movement of people who meet a certain test of ideological purity, it's a forum or a place or a set of rules where hateful words or actions are not permitted. You can be a racist or a misogynist or a homophobe if you can manage to be polite, respectful, and meet the requirements of the forum. Again, I know this seems a bit like splitting hairs, but it's really not. It's the difference between a club that only permits non-smokers to enter and a club that doesn't allow smoking inside. 3. Dogma I know this is a touchy point for all of us. Among the non-religious, dogma has a very negative connotation. I've heard the argument that Atheism Plus has no dogma because the principles are subject to review, debate, and discussion. How rules are selected is unfortunately not the primary criteria for dogma. The untouchability is. 
I think most of us from the outside see this very clearly, but it must be harder to see from within. If your movement is founded on certain core, unassailable positions, possibly positions that define the movement, then you have a dogma. The atheist dogma is simple. The evidence for the existence of a god or gods doesn't meet the burden of proof. If you dispute that point, you simply aren't an atheist, QED. This is why so many people object to mixing politics and atheism. You start with a very simple position and make it very, very complicated. In the process, you take on board baggage that cannot be unloaded without abandoning the whole idea. It's like religion in that sense, and that concerns me for reasons that all former believers can understand. 4. The Emergence of a Power Elite I appreciate that Atheism Plus is primarily a web forum and chat board, and hence is democratic. In every democracy, though, there emerges a ruling class, a power elite, a legislative, an executive, and judicial specialization. There is no way to avoid the issue of resolving disputes between members, of setting the agenda for discussions and votes, or of making tough decisions about allocating resources. Like anyone, the people most involved in these functions dislike criticism and have their own biases and causes. It would be a simple thing for Atheism Plus to evolve into ever more specific sets of ideological requirements. For example, Sam Harris and P.Z. Meyer disagree on racial profiling. Sam Harris feels there's value in it. P.Z. does not. How will P.Z. handle this dispute? Will Sam Harris be allowed to speak at a conference dedicated to atheism plus social justice if the talk involves this disputed topic? Christopher Hitchens was famously intolerant of what he called Islamofascism. He supported the Gulf War and was at times a Marxist but had sympathies with neoconservatives. Would he be an appropriate speaker at an Atheism Plus conference? Would he be allowed to pick the topic and viewpoint? What concerns me here is that once we have a dogma, a test of ideological purity, and a group of people who have the power to influence what Atheism Plus is and isn't, the potential exists to create an atheist priesthood. None of us want that, I think. Now, I am aware that it is too late to stop this thing. The table is set, the plates are filled, any changes will need to be on the fly. So I've come up with what I think are the minimal reassurances I would want from the movement. 1. No naming and shaming. No exclusionary tactics for non-conformity or non-participation. 2. No ideological tests of purity. 3. A stated commitments to tolerance and free speech that covers all topics. 4. Recourse appeals to the community, rather than hierarchical command structure. If I were to append to your list of what Atheism Plus stands for, it would be this. We are atheist, plus we believe in tolerating people of all views, as long as they are non-disruptive. We are atheist, plus we have a deep commitment to free speech, especially as applied to unpopular or offensive speech, so long as it does not threaten the safety and free expression of others. We are atheists, plus we believe in ruthless self-criticism of our most cherished beliefs. With those simple additions, I'd be much more interested in joining your movement. Whether you agree to my suggestions or not, be aware that I and many others in the larger rationalist community will be keeping one eye on what emerges from Atheism Plus. We will be evaluating your conduct and adherence to shared principles and expressing our opinions here and in other forums. You will find that we can be either critical or supportive, the investigative journalists or the cheering fans in the front row. We all have a vested interest in seeing the movement advance on multiple fronts. Wish you all well, and I appreciate your patience. Thanks for watching. Every cell of each plant and animal contains genetic information coded onto the DNA molecule. The model.